khi còn là giám đốc diễn đàn phát triển Việt Nam và ông đã tư vấn hợp tác với Bộ Công Thương xây dựng cái quy hoạch phát triển công nghiệp hỗ trợ đầu tiên của Việt Nam và ông cũng là người có tầm ảnh hưởng nhất định đến chính sách phát triển của Nhật Bản tại các nước phát triển. Ừ. Và trong phần trình bày của mình thì ông sẽ có bài tham luận về công cụ chính sách phát triển nguồn nhân lực và nâng cao năng lực cạnh tranh công nghiệp của Nhật Bản và khả năng áp dụng cho Việt Nam. À, xin mời ông. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Japan has a very highly developed supporting industry programs and I would like to share about 10 components so Vietnam can selectively and with proper adjustment adopt some of them. <coughs> In fact, we are already starting between the two governments to do these things. <coughs> First, slides. No? Oh, this one, okay. Okay, this is dead. Oh. Okay. In my opinion, there are core policy and periphery policies, and the core policy for supporting industry is people and enterprises. Create strong people and enterprises. There are also other things that you can do, but today I would like to just concentrate on people and enterprise competitiveness. Um, okay. uh, more specifically, in the case of Vietnam, I would like to suggest three things. First, you create some uh, concrete productivity and competitiveness uh, targets. Uh, so you will can monitor and see whether you're uh, uh, really uh, achieving this. Second, you start with manufacturing uh, uh, labor productivity and improvement and then you go later to the services and agriculture. Number three, in the case of Vietnam, like you're receiving FTI so much, there are three components of the key policies. One is invite uh, good, but that is technology and skill teaching FDI. Number two is improve domestic capacity of people and enterprises and then linkage policy that many people talked about. Problem with the, uh, the Vietnamese policy, as I said, is that Japan has a, you know, has a deep relationship with Vietnam for at least 25 years. But Vietnam has not adopted any of the Japanese productivity models in a serious way. Uh, some of the things that are done are very small scale and just a short term. It does not go to the whole nation uh, improvement. And I suggest that uh, Vietnam should start something called the National Productivity Movement, which is more comprehensive and long lasting, at least several years, not just a scattered approach. In any uh, industrial programs, uh, you start with a pilot project to 45 countries, uh, companies or 30 companies, as uh, Samsung and World Bank are doing. But that is just the beginning. Uh, in the end, you have to you know, uh, create your own institution, your own experts, and do it and nationally. And then you give it to the private sector to continue. Vietnam has done many things, but you just stop, stopped at the pilot level. You, you, this is not good enough. Now, with the remaining time, I'd like to talk about 10 things. And I would say that none of these will violate WTO or FTAs. Another thing is I would go very fast in order to save time. But we are drafting a Vietnam productivity report, which has details. And we are, uh, interim report uh, publication is March next year. So if you're interested, please refer to this. First problem is the mindset. Before we discuss anything uh, detail, I think, uh, do you have the right mindset to do the manufacturing? Uh, these are the people, the Japanese uh, founders of Toyota cars, uh, Panasonic, Honda motorbike, and the Kyocera. These are the people who are not interested in short-term profits. They are interested in satisfying themselves by producing the best products and satisfying customers. 
Monozukuri is Japanese manufacturing with high spirit. Can you do the same thing? Uh, if you are uh, short sight minded and if you are not interested in cooperation and teamwork, if you don't pay attention to details, you are not very good. I think you start with something like that. I'm very interested that some of the activities are happening in Vietnam, and that is uh, um, Dr. Min's uh, activity at the GKM. Uh, he is trying to develop a Vietnamese way to change the mindset of Tante, uh, of uh, the Vietnamese managers and workers. I think Taco has already worked with him. I hope uh, this picture shows that the Tante or the mindset should be at the bottom before you teach other tools and basics. Number two, <coughs> Japanese policy organization. Here I'd like to say just uh, three things. First, uh, two, uh, well, two things. Japan has many layers of supporters at the uh, policy level and implementation level. Japan also works at the central government, local government, and the private sector level. We have many supporters. And um, uh, another thing is we have many Japanese export, experts who are willing to help SMEs and supporting industries in Japan and also outside uh, Japan. Many of the JICA experts are such experts. Uh, Japanese SME policy over time shifted from the protection of SMEs by the exploitation of big companies. That was our first move. Uh, we have to protect these SMEs. Then later, we wanted to create a globalized and excellent SME, uh, S, uh, SMEs, and that is our main focus now. Now, Kishinho and Denshinho. These are the, the key Japanese uh, supporting industry promotion laws, which span from 1956 to 1971. This is a period of Japanese high growth, and this was a temporary law. That means government will support you, but only until you graduate. This is not a permanent support. What they do is a MITI, the Ministry of Industry, Trade and uh, Ministry of International Trade and Industry, uh, uh, annually uh, selects a key component and uh, produces programs and invites SMEs to participate. And this is not a neutral uh, judgment. Uh, government will help you, SME, to pro produce uh, good applications, good strategies. So government is not a judge, but a very helpful coach. Now, uh, another thing is MITI invites the Ministry of Finance to work together to provide an integrated support. And this is the picture. Uh, after the MITI Deliberation Council uh, creates a policy, MITI side provides a technical support. And the MOF side supports the management uh, improvement and the finance, investment finance, so to the same SME. So this is an integrated way of support. Number four, five years in Kaizen. Kaizen is a Japanese way of improving the factory efficiency without spending much money. It is uh, elimination of muda, and muda is anything that does not create value, any movement, any storage, any action, any defective products that do not add value, and we want to eliminate to zero. Um, this 5S is the basic thing that in Kaizen, and this 5S is, is a 5S word, I will not explain in detail, but it starts with Remove all the unnecessary things from your factory first. Then with the remaining things which are necessary, just put them in order so you can pick up in two seconds. That is the, the sense of Kaizen, and you can go deeper and deeper. You don't need a PhD to understand this, but it is very difficult to practice this every day and improve it. Toyota is still doing this. <coughs> These are the Kaizen tools. You, they are very simple ones, uh, saying a good morning in the, uh, and then saying, uh, doing the reporting to your boss. To the very complicated Toyota production system, there are many tools. Okay, Shindan and Shindanshi. Now, who will train the teachers? 
Japan has a Shindan system, which means an advisory or consultation system for specifically SMEs. We're not talking about you know, high, high fee uh, uh, MBA people. We're talking about the public support for SME with low cost. And we employ a lot of uh, Japanese uh, official and private experts. About 25,000 people registered, the number of the registrations is increasing. The government certifies and gives the test and the renewal every five years. So these are the government certified experts. Many of the, uh, the, uh, the JICA experts coming to Vietnam are Shindan Shi or the Shindan experts. Okay, and the, Thailand also copied this system. We also have SME universities that teach these Shindan Shi. Handholding is, is a very selective and invitation-only support. We will not support many SMEs, but SMEs with a proper mindset and potential, government will have a three-year program to take it from here to achieve the goal of export or of new product uh, development. Uh, this is done very much in Japan and Jetro, uh, and the local governments in Japan are very active players. Uh, in Korea and Malaysia and Taiwan, they are also doing this. This is a very specialized uh, uh, support for SME to create excellent companies. Now, uh, many people talk about R&D centers and are necessary. Sorry. What? Kosetsushi is Japan's R&D center. This is, we have 47 provinces or prefectures, and every prefecture has at least one or two of these centers. This is a SME subsidized uh, technical support. You can do the R&D, but you can also test the quality of your material. If you have a defect, they will find out the cost for you at the subsidized rate. Uh, some, uh, I think MYT is looking at this system right now to, for adoption. Uh, uh, this has a very long history, more than a century in Japan. Okay. Uh, Kosen is a TVET system, technical training system for Japan. And uh, Japan also has a 40, uh, 57 Kosen, about 10,000 students. They directly go to the factories and become the engineers. Uh, practice and uh, theory are combined. Now, I'd like to say that this, uh, yeah, uh, Jack has already supported to do the pilot Kosen project in the south of Ho Chi Minh City and uh, I think uh, Vinh Phuc and a few other places. This is just a pilot project. Uh, it, you have to do uh, some simplification and modification when you bring uh, this system to to uh, Vietnam, but the core of the Vietnam Kosen system is as follows, five points. You have to teach technical things that everyone is doing in Vietnam, but the other things are not done. Teaching proper attitude and mindset, and uh, creativity, not just uh, doing what is told, but you have to creatively do something, that, you know, act, some, act, and that is lacking in many uh, students. And then school must make an effort to link with the companies and then help the, the recruitment of the workers to the companies. And then school must improve these things. I think these are the pilot causing conditions and we want to roll out to the whole nation. Okay. These are causing pictures in Vietnam. Gino, did you say, or the technical interns, uh, Japan has so many technical interns from Vietnam and they are trained for three years at the Japanese companies and sent back. We want to make sure that they will continue to use their learned skills in Vietnam. Uh, by the way, the Japanese law for Gino Jishusei is changing significantly right now. So we have to discuss how to cope with this in the long run. One problem with the Gino issue say is that the broker companies in Vietnam and Japan, some of them are not very good. So we have to encourage the good uh, partnership, I mean the broker uh, services. We have chosen two good companies in, on the Vietnamese side and the JICA is supporting, our embassy is supporting, so they will succeed. Now the last thing is how JICA 
teaches Kaizen to other nations. Jack has taught Kaizen to many, many countries. And, and then one thing that is important is first Jack experts come and you know, improve 30 companies. That's just a pilot thing. And then uh, the Vietnamese you know, experts will grow. So you don't need a Jack experts. That's number two. And the lastly, the government is not needed. The private sector enterprise uh, experts are sufficiently large, so you don't need a government involvement. Uh, Thailand has moved to that stage already. Vietnam is only stage one. Uh, at the bigger stage, uh, Japan also helped the, the productive movement much bigger than Kaizen. And our first trial was 1980s with the Singapore, and Singapore learned it very well. Uh, it went in three stages. First is awareness stage. You, everyone understands what is done, why this productive is important. Second, the actual improvement of companies by the Japanese expert and Singaporeans learn, learning by doing. And the third, the Singaporeans can do it by themselves and they start teaching other countries. Uh, many other countries, other than Singapore, as you see, have uh, uh, doing this, but not Vietnam yet. So, my last word is that I would like to start, restart a Japan-Vietnam cooperation. Not just World Bank and, and Samsung and Korea, but Japan is very serious about doing this. My talk is not just talk. I, I'm just discussing with the Japanese ambassador, Meti, JICA, and other people. So if Vietnamese government is serious, let's start this, you know, some of these things. We cannot in, uh, introduce 10 of them, but some of them uh, in the near future. Um, okay, thank you very much.